Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make landscapes using geometry nodes. It's going to be a fairly simple tutorial, pretty straightforward, probably around 14 to 16 nodes altogether. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing, with the default cube selected, I'm going to go to these top tabs up here, I'm going to click layout, and then I'm going to drag my cursor to the bottom left until I see a crosshair. Left mouse button click and drag this up. I'll then click this icon here and I'm going to change it to geometry nodes. I'm going to click new, I'll just hit N to close that end panel there. Drag this across here, in fact we can disconnect that. So the first node is going to be the grid node, so I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to search for grid. I'll add that there. I'm going to change the vertice count just while we're working to 128 on the X and Y and I'm going to keep the size to 1 meter for now. We can change this a bit later on. I'll then plug the grid node into the group output geometry. So we've now got this grid. Never go to wireframe view. You can see the resolution of the vertices here. So I've set it to 128. If your computer is a bit slow you can set it to 64 for the final output. I'm going to set mine to 512 but that will do for now. Let me just disable wireframe. And now we need to distort this mesh. So I'm going to hit Shift A and search for set for set position. And I'm going to click this set position node and pop it in between here. I also want the mesh to have smooth shading. So I'm going to hit Shift A and we go for search and type in set space shade and we'll choose set shade smooth. Now we want to displace each of the vertices using this position socket here. That should be fairly straightforward and we're going to drive it with a noise texture. So I'm going to hit Shift A and we go for texture and we choose noise texture. I'm going to set the noise texture to 4D and I'm going to change it from FBM to multifractal. Now I just want to displace this mesh on the Z axis. I don't want it to displace on the X and Y. That wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to hit Shift A and we search for combine and we choose combine XYZ. I then plug the factor into the Z value of the combine XYZ. We want to retain the original position of this grid because if I was to plug the combine XYZ vector into the position, it would completely lose track of where the original mesh is. So in essence, it's displacing everything. So I'm going to disconnect that. And to achieve that, we're going to use a couple of math nodes plus a position node. I hit Shift A, go to Search, and we type in Position, and we choose Position. I'll then hit Shift A, Utilities, Vector, and Vector Math. Alternatively, you can hit Shift A and just search. We're going to keep this set to Add, and we'll add the original position of the grid to the Z vector from the noise texture and now if I was to plug this into the position it still go a bit crazy but at least it knows where it is relative to the origin so now we just need to tone this down slightly that's easy enough I'm just going to copy this vector math node I'm going to hit shift D and I'm going to paste it in between the combine XYZ and I'm going to change this to scale maybe I'll set the scale to 0.025 Okay, we're getting somewhere now. I'll just go into viewport shading just so we can see what we're doing a bit better. I'm going to change my detail on my noise texture to 15. That should be sufficient. I'm going to keep the roughness at 0.5 and maybe we can add another level of control in between the noise texture and the combine XYZ by adding an RGB curves. So I'm going to hit Shift A, search and we go for RGB and we choose RGB curves. I'm going to pop that into there and now I'm going to create kind of an S curve so I'm just going to add a point here I'm just going to drag it to this first intersection here maybe I'll drag one down here possibly I can add one here maybe bring this down a bit to around about there and then maybe add another one something to around about there okay I'm just going to bump up my resolution to 256 on the grid node so we're getting a bit more detail here maybe I can take this down slightly Something around about there. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. We are going to have a slight problem with this. So if I was to change the scale up to there, as you can see, the base of the grid goes above the origin point. So what I want to do is add another vector math node, which is going to compensate for that. So I'll select this add node here. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate that. And I'll paste it in between the vector scale and the vector add node. And we only want to compensate on the Z axis. So I'm going to take this combine XYZ. I'm going to hit Shift D. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to plug the vector into this add node. And now we can expose this value as a compensation value. But for now, I'm going to set this to 0.025. This will come in use when we expose the values in our geometry nodes. Maybe we'll just add one more node just to round this off. And that's going to be for a material. I'll hit Shift A and I'll search set and we we'll choose 
set material and I'll pop that as the last node in the tree okay just increase this window now we need to expose all these values so they're easily accessible in our modifier section so I'm going to take this group input I'll drag it over here I'll expose the size X from the grid node into this group input I'll also expose the size Y and I'll plug it into the same input and I'm going to do the same for the vertice count for the X and Y and I'm going to plug those into the same sockets so we've got the size and vertice count i'll then hit n to open up my end panel i'm going to click this group button here and these are the values here so for the size i'm going to type in landscape size and for the vertices i'm going to type in vertice count and as you can see it's appearing on our modifiers over here as it is over here now for the vertice count we don't want to be able to drag these numbers to infinity because that will cause blender to crash so instead with the vertice count selected in the end panel i'm going to set the max to 2048 you can set it to something a bit lower like 1024 or 512 for example my default value here is 256 in fact i'm going to set the default value to 512 and then maybe I'll set the vertice count over here to 512 just to match the values that I've got here. I'll then drag this group input over to here and I'm going to connect all these values up from the noise texture, each with their own unique socket. I'll select the group input and under W I'm going to rename this to noise W factor and for the next one I'm going to rename it to noise scale and for the next one noise detail and for the next one noise roughness and for this one noise lacunarity and for the last noise distortion we'll expose two more factors here i'll expose this factor from the vector math set to scale and i'll drag that factor into the bottom socket of the group input node and i'll rename this one to noise magnitude and if you remember this one was an offset compensation so I'm going to drag this Z value from this combine XYZ into the bottom socket here and I'll rename this one to magnitude Z offset maybe I can expose the material value as well so on the set material node on the bottom socket let's just drag this over here quick we're going to drag this material value onto the bottom socket too so now we can change the material on the fly without going back into geometry nodes i'll hit n to close that panel now it's probably a good idea to name this geometry node setup as something like landscape generator i'm going to save mine as like and subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends now i'm going to take my cursor into this top window into the bottom left here until i see the crosshair left mouse button click and drag down I'll then hit numpad period to recenter the mesh to the view yep this is what we've got with this w factor you can actually animate this by adding keyframes if you wanted to animate your landscape pretty cool effect the noise scale is the size of the pattern so i could set this to 2.5 and it's going to generate kind of a broader landscape i quite like it set to around about four or five mark if i set it to 10 for example it's going to be a bit noisy for that size so let's just set it to four obviously the noise detail is the amount of detail in the noise pattern um, we've got the noise roughness that should add a bit more detail you might have to reduce your noise magnitude if you increase the noise roughness. You've got the lacunarity, which is layers. So this can also provide another level of detail. The distortion does exactly what it says on the tin. It distorts the noise pattern. You can create some kind of interesting effects going on there. And let's just turn up the noise roughness to, let's say, 0.75. As you can see, it's created a lot of spikes here, but we can tone that down with the noise magnitude. So I'm holding down shift and dragging the noise magnitude down. We get lots of different variations of what we can do with this. I'll just set that to 0.025 again. I'm going to turn my roughness down to 0.5. Just a quick update folks, so I've made one more addition to this node structure, I'll just show you what it is. We're going to click this noise texture over here, I'm going to hit Control shift d and that will create a duplicate while maintaining the connection to the previous node. I'm then going to hit Shift-A, search and type in colour for colour mix and we choose mix colour. I'm going to pop that into there, I'm going to pop this top factor into socket A and this bottom factor into socket B and we'll drag this mix factor and pop it into a new socket, I've already made one and then you click N to open up the end panel, make sure on group 
up here and rename your socket as multifractal versus FBM and that's the two different noise types and then we're going to plug the result from that into this RGB curves. I'll then drag this multifractal versus FBM to where it says noise W factor. In fact I want it above the noise W factor so I'll just drag it under vertice count so it's in between vertice count and noise W factor so it appears here. I'll then change this bottom noise from multifractal to FBM. I'll just drag this down because we've finished with the geometry nodes now. I'll click N to hide that panel. I'm just going to close the geometry nodes panel and now I can switch between the noise patterns of multifractal and FBM. When you're on FBM you are going to have to increase your noise magnitude and then decrease your offset to compensate. So yep, yeah, that's just another addition so you don't have to flip in and out of geometry nodes to change the noise pattern. So yeah folks, now you've got a landscape generator made with geometry nodes. You can mark this geometry node landscape generator as an asset. So you just go to where you named it, you right click and you click mark as asset. If you want to texture this landscape, I recommend watching Master Material Masks, which is a previous episode I made. I'll leave the flag in the top right hand corner here so you can follow that. It shows you how to make free baseline masks you can use to blend in PBR materials or procedural materials. It's a really simple tutorial and that will help you in the process of texturing your landscape. So that's all for now, folks. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day. Level up and thanks for watching.